Hey, I'm Creech, and this is Creech and Cars, where I talk about car news, history, and culture. Today, we're going to be taking an early look at the Ineos Fusilier, an all-new off-road SUV offering that features both hybrid and fully electric powertrains. In this video, I'll go over the exterior and interior design, as well as the mechanical and performance specs of the Fusilier. Finally, I'll talk about pricing and release details compared to the competition to see if the Fusilier can compete and the current overlander market. Many of you are already likely aware of Ineos from its first model, the Grenadier, which burst onto the off-road scene in late 2022. With its retro and rugged design, the Grenadier has really been making waves. Oddly enough, Ineos began over 25 years ago as a chemical production company and it's currently the fourth largest chemical company in the world. With the largely positive reception the Grenadier has received, Ineos is now bringing the smaller Fusilier to market. Quick note on the name, a Fusilier was a type of infantry common throughout the 17th and 18th centuries, although the specifics of the role depend on the time and place the term was used. The overall proportions and design language are similar to the Grenadier and other models in the luxury off-road segment. The front end really gives off the overlander look with the classic circular headlights and fog lights. There's a bold bumper that leads into an aggressively angled front skid plate. I really like how the grille is a reasonable size on the Fusilier. This design definitely helps illustrate how ridiculous modern grille design has gotten. Fusilier is stamped onto the side of the hood as well. This is similar to what's done on the Grenadier. The side profile has the classic boxy design with black plastic accents and running boards. The wheels are black as well to accent the body color and large fender flares cover the proper mud tires. The roof has a nice cargo rack and the retro look continues in the back with a split rear door in place to access the cargo area and circular taillights that mirror the front end. The departure angle appears to be as good as the approach angle with another aggressive skid plate below the rear bumper. Overall, like the Grenadier, this design is aimed towards fans of old-fashioned overlanders with clean, simple and timeless designs. The interior design has not been officially revealed just yet, but I think we can get a pretty good idea of what it will look like because as with the exterior, the Fusilier is essentially just a smaller Grenadier. The Grenadier offers the perfect balance of luxury and utility, but I would expect the Fusilier to be more basic as it will come with a lower base price. The interior room will suffer as well just from the smaller footprint. The rugged design is centered around the blocky center control stack with a 12.3 inch infotainment screen. There are a lot of features specific to the off-road capabilities, like the large mechanical four-wheel drive selector that emphasizes the off-road essence of this vehicle, and there are several pre-wired auxiliary switches on the dash. The base seats are water and stain resistant cloth Recaros, and the floor is a removable rubber surface for easy cleaning. The Grenadier's higher-end optional materials and luxury features like its premium sound system will likely not find their way into the Fusilier, although the top trim Fusilier will still offer leather-heated seats and carpet flooring. While the Grenadier is strictly ICE-powered for now, Enios is embracing an electric powertrain for the Fusilier. However, unlike other off-road brands like Rivian and Scout, Ineos openly acknowledges the limitations of EVs, especially in the realm of off-roading. For this reason, there will be a pure battery electric powertrain that is accompanied by a gas hybrid powertrain. The BEV version will be good for about 200 miles per charge. This is obviously not going to be the choice for those who plan on actually going off-road. However, I have a feeling that it will comprise a significant portion of Ineos buyers, as it does with Wrangler and G-Wagon buyers who like the look of the vehicle and the feel of it, but they have no plans to ever go off-road really in any capacity. What's causing more of a store, however, is the hybrid powertrain, which is really a range-extended electric powertrain. The main distinction between that and the traditional hybrid setup is that here, both versions of the Fusilier will be wholly driven by an electric motor. The range extended version employs a gas generator that charges the battery as needed. One major benefit to this setup is that the engine is smaller and simpler as it's not directly affected by a throttle and therefore runs at a constant speed to simply charge the battery. 
Both versions will use 4x4 drivetrains, and we don't know how much power the Fusilier will get just yet. The Fusilier will likely get access to the Pathfinder navigation system, which is specifically designed for off-road use. One really cool unique feature it has is that it allows the driver to record and share routes to off-road destinations. The Fusilier will be built by Magnus Steyr, which is most well known for building the G-Class. The Fusilier is expected to be significantly cheaper than the Grenadier, possibly with a base price as low as $50,000. The Fusilier is in the earlier stages of development, and it won't go on sale until 2026 or 27. So with all of that information in mind, we can get a pretty good idea of what the Ineos Fusilier will offer by the time it gets to production, although there is still much to be announced with this model. The Fusilier does have one key competitor that is on the horizon, in addition to more indirect competitors like the Jeep Wagoneer S. The real battle here will be with the smaller electric G-Class that is in development at Mercedes right now. This mini G-Class will be a good bit smaller than the G550 and come with a price tag closer to the $60,000 range, dropping a lot of the ultra luxury features along the way. It will reach production around the same time as the Fusilier with an all electric powertrain. So while it's hard to make a proper comparison right now, I see both models finding a place in the market, with the Fusilier being a more hardcore, true off-roader, especially with that hybrid powertrain, while the Mini G-Class will remain largely a luxury SUV with moderate off-road capability, and the sales will come from people who just want something that looks like a G-Class. So that's everything we know so far about the Ineos Fusilier. Let me know what you think about the Fusilier in the comments below. This is part of a series on the channel called Startup Showcase, where I take a look at new startup car brands and their models. For more like this, check out the Startup Showcase playlist and subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.